Now, as Willie mentioned, this is a very special ride for a very special guy. This is Gunnery Sergeant John Hayes. Yeah, he was a bomb disposal technician. What happened on December 28th, uh, 2010, was he accidentally stepped on an IED, traumatic amputation of both his legs and half his pelvis. But he's a Marine, that didn't slow him down at all. So the stock LS3 at 430 horsepower, uh-uh, not enough for our guy. And check out how he actually drives and handles and maneuvers this car. Here's his throttle. He actually pulls this and that masses the gas down here. And then he pushes it this way for braking and steers with his right hand. So he's got a handful of, you know, sort of stuff here involved with the car and get it to perform. And now we're gonna add a few hundred horsepower to it. <laughs> yeah, now John's no slouch to challenges. He's already out there trying to pick up new skills like yeah. skiing, he's doing marathons, yeah. and Bicycling. part of his dream is getting this ride to the next level and the next level, and we brought some friends in to kind of help us do that. Now we've got a complete kit here from STS Turbos. Now All why right. don't you walk us through a little yeah, bit Rick, here. what do we got here? Yeah, we got T3, T4 turbos that are good for about a thousand horsepower. Ooh, thousand. We're not going to run that much on this car, obviously. Okay. And we got the waste gates here that control the boost levels. Right. Uh, those are made by Turbo Smart for us. And this all just kind of goes in the back of the car. Well, it goes, it goes in the back of the car stuff. where you yeah. want the weight as opposed to a turbo in the front, hanging over the front of the car where you don't want the weight. Yeah, so, and you're kind so. of balancing out once you you know, pop the mufflers on. This goes right in that sort of muffler location. You can see the four pipes come out the back. We got some really nice tips that'll go on here. So you know what? I think uh, the back's starting to make some more sense. We got a whole lot of work to do Tell under the Me and Rick will start the fuel injectors. How about Mitch? You want to team up with your boy? Skins? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, man. We're in, we're <laughs> in. Let's do this. So Rick, we got some, uh, some T3s and T4s in the back of this. Thank God, I couldn't imagine trying to uh, come up with a front mounted turbo system for this, because a, a lot of plastic a lot parts of stuff in here. up here. You'd have to heat shield just about everything. I'm sure accessibility is probably a big issue when you get to some of these things like this, because you can't get the plugs. Cause those... Well, it's a car, you're gonna have to work on it. So yeah. to be able to get all that stuff out of here, it's hard enough to get in with uh, this much stuff under the hood. Yeah, those front mounted turbos require custom exhaust and so forth, generate a lot of ambient heat. This way, it's back there, so we can get right after it now tell me we have 42 pound fuel injectors in here now we're going to obviously throw a lot more air at it so what kind of fuel you got to have some fuel yeah we're yeah. going to put 65 pound fuel injectors in okay. we're going to pull the spark plugs out put some colder plugs in and get this air and take stuff all out of the way too okay Okay, now Rick, you know that you tapped into the motor oil via the scavenger system because you got to keep that ball bearing turbo oiled up. And people think ball bearing turbos, they think just like regular ball bearings, but they're not. They're made out of alloy specifically designed to take the heat and the speed that they're running at, right? Yeah, these are actually ceramic ball bearings. Okay, cool. Now you tapped off the back of the block here for the scavenger pump. You're going to return it up to the uh, the valve covers, right? Yeah, well, a lot of people have to return to the oil pan with the gravity drain system, uh -huh. but with our pumps, we can actually uh, pull the valve covers off, return there, it's a lot easier yeah, than getting to the there. oil pan. Makes all the sense in the world. Mitch, how you doing, man? Hey. All right, you're gonna take that, we tap there and there, and then we pull off this fuel rail. Get ready to go with this. All right. Okay, so we're gonna put a, you know, a place for the return oil from the turbos, and like these guys were saying, the valve cover is a really easy place to get because it's a whole lot easier than pulling off an oil pan. So we've got our PCV kind of running through this, you know, chamber right here. We've got a little cover. It's all staked on. Now the first thing we're going to do is... We're going to pry this tab open right here, pulling these two off. And then we, were, we are going to get that open just enough to fit these snips in there and snip this off to the pattern that we've made. Okay, now why is it all funny shaped like that? So that we can bend this part sticking out a little bit down, sealing off this chamber right here so that no oil will get in there that we do not want. Kid's sharp, man. Yeah, so we're gonna keep all this oil flowing in from going right into our PCV, getting sucked in the intake manifold, which is a bad thing. So we'll keep these two separated. All right, so we're gonna fold that down, seal it off, and we gotta drill a hole somewhere right there, right? Yeah, so we're gonna hit it with the center punch right here. Then we will use the uh, pilot drill, drill bit so that we can get the next size drill bit to go in straight. And then we will tap it with this, making it so that it's threaded for the bolt to go in. Right, so we're gonna take this fitting right here and we're gonna stick it right in that tapped hole, right? Now what are we gonna do before we put this in? Put some Teflon tape on it so that we'll do what I'm we want to I'm taking notes, do. man. Nothing gets by this kid. All right, so you ready to make some chips? Yeah. Let's do it.
right, so me and Rick are buttoning up the top half here. We got the new injectors in. We got the valve covers drilled. Uh, now we're gonna change some plugs on it. We got some Champions, some Meridian plugs. I guess you wanna run a cooler plug. Obviously you're putting more air, you're putting more fuel in there. It makes the cylinder pressure in there a lot hotter, that combustion. Yeah, it's you, a lot hotter, you wanna try to cool it down your best can with some plugs, right? Yeah, you got a, you got a lot of cylinder pressure. So yes. we have to shut the gap down, put the gap down about 35 thousandths on these. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we run a couple steps colder. So let's keep the plug cooler because uh, yeah. it gets pretty hot in there. With yes, it does. On. Well, you're adding so much more fuel, so much much more air, uh, it's definitely gonna get hotter. So we'll get these new plugs in there, get that down a little bit, and have this top half buttoned up. Now, as Rick mentioned, we're gonna close the gap down, make it spark a little bit easier, especially with all that extra dense uh, air and fuel in there, which kind of makes some resistance. So get yourself a nice little simple tool, and you can kind of fold down that electrode, just like that, and then go in there and, you know, check your gap, get them all nice and squared and you're ready to go. Now heat is important, right? You want actually heat in that spark plug because it's good for ignitability. It helps get that initial kernel started and lets that flame front really build from there. If it's too cold, you're gonna have ignitability problems. But because of all that power, we do wanna make sure that we don't get over temped and that's why we're dropping that heat range down because that's where you get pre-ignition and serious engine damage. Now we're gonna run these Champion Iridiums. Champion makes spark plugs from everything from top fuel down to lawn mowers. But thankfully, they make one right in the middle, too, for our Corvette. So we're going to run the Iridium, which is a real premium hard material. So you're going to get real long life. And you can see we've got kind of a nice little fine wire. We've got a little thick base there to absorb some of that heat. It's going to be a great plug to do a lot and a lot of burnouts. Hey, welcome back to Guys Garage. All right, myself and Rick Squires from STS Turbo putting a whole lot of hoorah back in our Marines Corvette. Pretty cool, man. You uh, you size these twins up to the exact stock size of that muffler. You fit in there nice and tight. So pretty cool, man. Tell me real fast how you address the lag situation because a lot of people, it's obvious with a smaller turbo, you don't have that inertia. But a lot of people, six, seven, eight years ago, would think that rear mounted turbos have a lot of lag. Yeah, it's more of a perception than a reality. Uh, turbo lag is something that really happens bad if you missize the turbos. So Talking about the AR yeah, ratios. Yeah, so if your turbo's like not sized for the right size motor, the horsepower you're making, then you end up with a turbo that's got a lot of lag. Now being in the back, how do you adjust the heat situation? How much heat loss is it? Uh, there's about 500 degrees of heat loss between the front and the rear, okay. which is great because the turbo's on a vacation back there. <laughs> right. you know, it's not turning it's not bright yellow. Red, right? yeah, <laughs> and you don't have to have a turbo timer and to cool everything down. You're not coking your oil. Uh, so it's, it's nice for turbo durability. Uh, it, but as far as the spool up, you know, they're real responsive because all that exhaust energy is still contained in a sealed system. Okay. So when it comes out, it's hot, it expands, and it shoves that air right down to the, to the turbine and spins it. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, most people that drive them for the first time, that's their, their wow, this Can't is so it. responsive. You'd think it'd be, you know, hey, when's it gonna come and on? And I was doing some reading. Uh, it actually affects, you know, the inlet, the intake temperatures are affected by that piping. that oh, goes sure. back up to it. You actually cool it off a little bit. Some applications don't even say that you actually need an intercooler. Yeah, we get about 50% efficiency out of the uh, piping that runs up to the front. Okay. So it's almost like having an intercooler on there with just the piping. Then when we stick another intercooler on there, uh, your, your intake temps are almost ambient, so your horsepower per pound of boost is off the chart. Nice. All right, so our next steps, we're going to get these scavenger pumps back on there, get the oil back up to the, uh, the valve covers, where Mitch and Kev have already done drilled, have it ready, and we'll get these guys hanging in where the stock exhaust was, and we'll get to hear what these pups sound like, because i got to tell you, rear mount of turbo sound awesome. They do. All right, now Rick and Willie, they got the hot gases going down there, feeding those turbos. So it's spooling that turbine, which is driving the compressor wheel. So now we're building boost. And what we've done is we're gonna start routing from the compressor out, up and over the wheel well, and then in through the rockers. So I got one on both sides, and you can see the tube sneaking through here. We're gonna have another one come through this way. Now these are compressed air. This is what's gonna feed the engine and make all that power. Now it's a little bit warm, so we're gonna cool it down with intercooler. So right now, this pipe deadheads, and this one's gonna deadhead here and feed this intercooler. So if we look over here, we've got the two inlets for the compressor out. They're gonna move air through this radiator, right? Through the front of the car, which is gonna mount up here. You know, the air's gonna come through and cool it. We're gonna collect it. And with this little dude right here, we're gonna feed it right up into that throttle. Now, if you check it out, we've got a couple of doodads here. 
One is the MAF sensor. Mitch, why don't you come over and help me out? So this is our zip tube, our stock one. Our throttle body sits here, our air filter's down here. We're going to pull this MAF sensor out like that. And if you notice, somewhere buried on here will be a nice arrow to tell you which way the airflow goes. So I'll let you get that one in there. Perfect. We'll get some screws in there. And we've got a blow-off valve. And it's from TurboSmart. Now what this guy does here is, you know, you got your throttle blade. Let's see your throttle out here. Air is moving through. It's compressed. It's going to the engine. You got it wide open. You're making a lot of airflow. Well, what you do when you tip out, you shut that throttle. All that air is going to come slamming in here. The turbos are spooling. They got mass and momentum. They're going to shove a lot of air into this space. Maybe blow off some hoses, put the turbo in search. Not a good thing. So what do you do? You let it out. So this little valve right here, you attach it to the intake manifold. So it's referencing that pressure. It's also seeing the pressure in this pipe. And when they get to the right conditions, psh, lets the air out. Pretty simple. All right, so we've got the mass sensor on there. This guy's ready to go. Uh, I think we're about ready to mount this intercooler. All right, man. I'm out. I'm yeah. done. How you doing over there? Good, man. Good? Rick? Tap that well. Dave, Clear? She's plumbed. <laughs> she's done. All right, man. All the plumbing on this ride is finished. We've gone through every little clamp, nut, bolt, bracket. There's a lot of shiny, cool stuff in here. Yeah, I like the kind of stealth look, right? Yeah, there's less stuff than little, there was stock. A little hint of uh, <laughs> some performance upgrades with the blow off valve there, but aside from that, it looks pretty stealthy, kind of yeah, stock. Something it's down clean. there that makes you go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your next steps? Okay, we gotta put the gauges in. All right, yeah. gauges, gauges, where are we going? Mitch. All right, there we are. Okay. What's up, buddy? We have the air fuel ratio gauge right here, okay. which is also called the wide band, and we have the boost gauge right here. Uh, we'll be putting them right here where we can connect some wires up to them allowing the driver to see what his car is performing like. Yeah, we're gonna have a little cockpit area in there for Mr. John. So we got this cleaned up. We're about ready to add the gauges, a little bit of wiring, throw the cowl on there. And then when we come back, you're gonna find out a little bit more about the guy that's gonna be behind the wheel of this. I mean, it is for sure an American dream, but that guy, wow, what an American hero. Wait till you find out his story. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. All right, as you know, we got the turbos all tightened up. We got the exhaust all buttoned up. I'm gonna finish the pillar post here where we have our auto meter gauge. We got a boost gauge and this wideband gauge. You saw Mitch welding in our bung earlier. So it's not just your normal O2 sensor. So you get a whole spectrum to measure with. Uh, kind of cool, a 14 year old did that. And as you guys can see, as we get into this car, Man, it's kind of got a stealthy look, something anybody would be proud to drive, especially our Marine, John Hayes. Now, once PPG heard his story, man, they wanted to get involved and they wanted to do some awesome stuff. That's why you get this stealthy look. Now, here's some guys from PPG telling you exactly how in-depth and crazy they got with this paint job. Check it out, I'm gonna finish this up. This project is based off of a 2009 Chevrolet Corvette. This is actually a design I had sketched up a few years ago when I thought my dream car was gonna be a, a new Corvette. But my wife and daughter talked me out of that. A lot of the, the man hours were, were really spent on laying out the graphics, making sure everything was, was perfect. Basically, the, the graphics were, were meant to be subtle, but kind of still have that racing look because a Corvette is a performance vehicle at the end of the day. For this project, we've selected our EnviroBase waterborne base coat. Being that it's water-based, it is completely different from any solvent base coat that is out there. In this application doing graphics, one of the big advantages of it is the quick dry and the thin film build. This paint dries, it dries about half the film build as a solvent base coat. So it makes it easier for us as we're layering different colors not to end up with big edges. PPG EnviroBase high performance base coat is, is a proven system. It is used on cars every day at the OEM plants. In the custom paint industry, it's just kind of getting its start. It's very durable, and like I say, the colors are just more vibrant. They really pop. Obviously, we've uh, we put a lot of hours in this car, uh, long days, but knowing who this is for, this Marine, uh, he's such a young guy, it's, 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 it really is heart-wrenching. But the fact that these people go fight for us, they give us our freedoms, you know, we have the opportunity to do things like this. 
it. I, I can't wait to see the look on his face when he sees this. He's going to be so excited. All right, John, man, you a little excited? Oh, yeah, extremely, a little bit. Yeah. extremely, extremely. Now, to give you a little bit of background, we've been working on this thing for a little while. Yeah. So it is now not only a custom car cover, which is just the top of the <laughs> iceberg, right? There was yeah. a custom car under here that we've been building on for a little while, and we got a lot more to go. So you ready to kind of see where we're at so far? Oh, yeah, extremely now, ready. Now, John, you have a couple signatures, and we apply yes. those to the car. You I, ready to see a couple? I, I'm ready to see. Okay, All ladies right. and gentlemen. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man, that's killer. Oh, and it, the paint looks perfect. It sits it off perfect. I can't believe that. What is, what, tell us a little bit about And that's paint, this. that's not a decal. No, no this is all hand that done is, by the guys at PPG. Oh my God. Everything on here, this is all custom work. It's amazing the number of layers, the number of hours, the all skill that, that went in, pretty much to create this for you. That's the way it should be painted. You don't understand, like that, that is perfect. And uh, Okay, why the buzzer, why the pickaxe? The EOD has taken the Marine Corps emblem, the eagle, the globe, and the anchor, and then turned that into a buzzard, because we're lazy buzzards, a bomb, because we work on explosives, and a pick is usually what we're digging the ordinance out with. So it's our take on the Marine Corps emblem. And what do you guys do? And in in, in out there in the field, tell everybody what you guys do, because it's amazing. It, any, anything, any, any U.S. ordinance, any Ford ordinance, any nowadays where uh, improvised explosive devices are our name to fame, that's, that's, what we, that's what we do. We have to take care of any munition, any explosive item that hasn't detonated, landmine, anything. It's our job. And this actually Signifies landed it. you up in this. That's it. That's how I got hurt. That's how I got hurt. I was working on an IED, found one, didn't see another, stepped on it, and next thing you know, I'm here a yeah. year and a half later. Hey, but you're here in front of your dream car. <laughs> getting, getting ready, <laughs> getting my dream car. They still actually produce this car, and that's what's amazing. I've never owned a car that they've actually produced, <laughs> sports car-wise. That's so amazing. And oh. for you guys to do this means so stinking much to Man, me. Man, well, we're sitting here watching car TV oh, and, and taking it easy. Guys like yeah. John are out there every day risking life and limb yeah. so that we have our freedoms, we have our protections, we have our great country that we live in. So today is just a day that we can kind of give you a little bit of payback. Yeah. Some of your other peeps out there, they're out there working hard for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate John a little bit into the build. Yep. This guy is a go-getter, man. He yeah. is all over it. Nothing Nothing's is going to bring him down. down. <laughs> he's mountain bike racing and <laughs> marathon, and, and he's, uh, yeah. he's going to be behind the wheel of one sick Corvette. <laughs> Check this out, John. Heck yeah. The design incorporates a lot of graphic elements. It kind of gives a sleek, fast uh, motion to the car. Um, a lot of the, the man hours were, were really spent on laying out the graphics, making sure everything was, was perfect. Then after that, we started thinking about other ways to really make the car personal to, to John, basically. And uh, he was part of the EOD in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And uh, talking to him, he was real adamant on getting the, the actual EOD buzzard on it. Uh, because with the Marines, they're very uh, you know notorious for the eagle and the globe with the anchor and with the buzzard he told me that uh, it's kind of one of those logos that the marines frown on because it still has that same look but it's not the typical globe and anchor it's got a pick it's got a crazy looking buzzard and a bomb and uh, he was really proud of that logo so we're going to definitely do that big on the the front of the hood here the tattoo that we're uh, going to do was uh, kind of a, a hidden surprise, if you will, with John having a, a tattoo along with his dad of the, the EOD logo. It's got a kind of a bomb on the one side and a crazy looking skull on the other. And again, it's something that's very personal to, to John and his father. And uh, Paul's going to be doing the, uh, the airbrushing of it on the back hatch of the car. And uh, again, we're doing a kind of a, a real nice and subtle tone where it'll still be a nice focal point of the vehicle, but it's not going to be a real loud and in your face kind of have a more personal touch to it. So I'm taking his tattoo and I'm sketching it out on this transfer paper, which will actually make a paint mask. Normally I could just put this right on the car, but we're putting this in a place on the car where there are already graphics and there's multiple colors underneath it. So I have to turn this all back into one color. There's the area where we're going to put the tattoo and it's got the multi-colors. And now I'm cutting out the detailed areas. What I want to do is cut out all the areas where the blackest part is. And then I'm going to take the reverse of that, the positive side, and I'm going to lay it down. So I'll, I'll transfer that to here. And then what I'm doing is I'll be able to come in here with my black, and it will register everything. It'll put everything in proportion. It'll put the nose, the star, the eye, 
where it needs to be. So this is kind of a fun process. I cut and just make little templates basically what I'm doing. I'll spray a light coat of black. I will remove the templates and I will come in and do more of the shading and the detail work with the airbrush. The artwork's almost complete. Just doing a couple little uh, touch-ups here on the, the main part. And the next time you guys see it, it will be in the two guys' garage. So there you go, John. Some amazing work they did at PPG. A lot of hours, a lot of layers, a lot of time, man. And just keep it nice in your shop, your garage uh, or whatever. Covercraft industry gave us this custom oh, form fit cover, complete with our logo on it, so you don't forget where you got it from. That's the best part, man. <laughs> That's the best part. Well, we got you. All right. Start with some Akibono premium brake pads to give you absolute control. NVH, just noise, vibration, harshness. They're made in America. You're going to love awesome. that. Heck yeah. Dust free, so good stuff. Yeah, and what's nice is this is their ultra premium ceramic. So this is actually the latest compound. So this is the compound on the 2012 Corvette. Awesome. And it's baked in for 2009. So we got the latest premium pad to go with. And why are these guys slotted DBAs. in this, this direction? Well, this is from Disc Brake Australia. And these are their premium rotor. They've got a you know, high alloy, it's a high carbon alloy, so it's gonna have good thermal stability. Well, with all that heat that you put right into that pad and that rotor, like instantly when you start hitting the binders, it'll take any sort of gases, air, that's trapped between these two, and they're gonna put heat in and expand it. So, just, so it's gonna try to separate that pad from the rotor, got give it. you that spongy, soft feel. So what you do is you put slots in, you can do cross drilling as well, but the slots are typically a little bit more robust, you don't get the spider cracks, from a lot of the cross drilling, so it's nice and smooth, lets the gases escape really, out of there. Really state of the art stuff. Wow, I appreciate it. Oh, no, you're not appreciating it. You're putting it on, bro. <laughs> let's All right. do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. All right, let's start lowering the car. Let's <laughs> grab some tools. Let's get dirty. Okay, I got the bleeder tight again. What I did is I just loosened the bleeder, and John here just carefully wedged in between the pad and the rotor squeeze the piston back into that caliper. So we spit the old fluid back into the pan instead of shoving that heat cycled fluid in the caliper back up into the line. So now, we're pretty much ready to start pulling bolts, dropping this stuff out. There you go, man. Got them all bolted in, ready to roll, man. You gotta love that. Okay, so here's the deal. Got your turbos, got your intercooter, got gauges, got all kinds of stuff, got your new rotors, put new uh, Akibono uh, brake pads on there, so you're not gonna have to do with that friction, that dust, all that stuff made in America. Come on, son, give me some of this. That's it. All right, but we're not done yet. No, oh, man. We got more for you. We got we're some more for you, Bob. Uh-uh. Check this out. Oh, man. The magical mystery tire just That's rose it. in the set. <laughs> <laughs> All right, check it out, bro. All right, we got this from Discount Tire, okay? It's the Falcon of Zenus. It's the Cray Scorpion rim. We're going to throw this on there. Not only will you be burning these things up, you'll be really sticky when you're going through the turns, having a blast, right? A lot better, a lot better wear hey, pattern. These are going to put those hand controls to a <laughs> test. I guarantee it, John. Let's try All it. All right, so let's get them up here. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, you think we're done, John? I think we're done? I hope so. No, we're not done. Go hey, welcome back. We're here with Marine Gunnery Sergeant John Hayes. Bro, you've been a huge help. So Thanks, thank bro. you so much. Turner Wrench is helping us out. It's kind of like Christmas, right? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, well, Way better. Yeah, Way this is a Christmas better. tree with your Christmas lights, man. We got these pups already mounted. So we're not done yet. You get more stuff. Oh, man. Uh, Phillips has hooked us up with these LED daytime running lights. Now you may ask yourself, why do I need daytime running lights? Yeah. Well, they found out, believe it or not, there's a 14 to 15% increase in safety. All right, and they have that right. mandatory over in Europe and in Canada right now. Okay. It's coming this way. We're gonna get you ahead of the bell curve because awesome. we want to keep you safe. Bro. Appreciate okay? it. Okay, now let me show you a little bit about these things. Come in this cast aluminum case. So these are the real deal. Unlike some of those accent lights, you know, plastic, the plastic ones yeah, that yeah. melt and all that stuff. And the color burn temperature of these are amazing. It cuts through all the haze, really smoke, fog, whatever you may run into, okay? Yeah. Now check these out. All right, so say you jump in your car, start it up. You're sitting at 12 volts. So when you start it up, it's going to run up to 14 volts or so. Bam, wow. look at nice that. And Woo, bright. right? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm You're talking about. You're getting attention. About. You got it. Yes, you got your attention. Now, the cool thing is how easy these are to wire up. Yeah. Literally, you know, a red wire to black wire, you pretty much got it. So check this out. You never have to crack into the cab for a wire of your car. Just break your, uh, your headlight wires with this little guy right here. And as soon as you turn on your headlights, this is going to simulate your headlights coming on. Watch what happens. Boom. They kick down. Yeah. Got it. So 
That so way you're not you're not overpowering with your headlights and these. Right. Got it. Okay. Exactly. Right. So how easy is that, man? Too it's easy. that simple to wire up. All right. So pretty cool stuff from Philips. It's their LED daytime running lights. It's DOT approved. In simple to wire up. Yeah, they come with these clips. They got mounting holes here. You got can't it. get much better than that. No. Yeah. So well, speaking of visibility, sometimes it's the little things. This brought awesome. your car in, you had the squeaky wipers. No good. We're putting you some new ones. So yeah. These are like the latest and greatest design, oh, right? Man. This is the Trico Force. It's a unibody construction. And what's kind of cool, right? You got turbos. You're going to drive a little faster than normal? A little bit. A little, little faster. faster. All right. Normally, your wiper blades start to lift up. They get fluttery. Yeah. Well, these have a Vortec airfoil, right? So the air starts to bounce right off of these guys. Keep them down. Hug them to the windshield. So no matter what driving conditions you're in and what speed you're going, <laughs> everything's nice, clean wipe. That almost sounds like a challenge. Yeah. Let's go. High glide coating on there so they're smooth and quiet. So I'm going to go mount those guys on there. Hurry up. Let's go. The lights are on. Let's go. Yeah, I think the lift's up pretty much. Yeah. We're waiting on you. Waiting on me. All right. Let's they go, go mount the Trico Force. Let's go drive. All right. Let's do it. All right. Welcome back. You're ready for this. Oh, Everybody's yeah. ready oh, for this. Yeah. This has been. A dream come true for you this afternoon, right? Oh yeah. The dream's almost complete. John, welcome to your new chariot, but we have one last little surprise. <laughs> yeah, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> but are you really ready? We have one little detail here. There you go. We laid in for you. Oh my gosh. We know that's important to you. We know it means a lot. Oh my God, you guys are crazy. <laughs> you guys You're are crazy. crazy. <laughs> Every time you get in this car, man, there you, you get to remember. I can't believe your you. Your mentor, you put right there, right alongside of you. I can't believe you did that. Wow, that means a lot. Mm. Oh, man. We don't mean to tear you up before we go tear it up. Let's do it, buddy. Let's you ready? Awesome, right? I'm there. All right. Oh, man. Sorry, Willie, but I'm in already. <laughs> What? And obviously John's in already. Hold up, hold up. So look. I'm sorry, buddy, but. <sighs> All right, man. We'll come back for you, I promise. Well, well look, we like, know this is a, a drink <laughs> come true for you. I know you've been waiting <laughs> yeah, to do this. Yeah, buddy. Thank you, brother. Enjoy, man. Will do. That's called seniority. We just took a spin, but the ride's not quite over, man. Yeah, we've been telling you the entire day that the ride's not over. And my man, it's not. We got more for you. All right, so go ahead, take a look to your right, and open your eyes. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. More goodies, man. You guys are killing me. You, <laughs> you know what you're going to do is some performance me. driving. Gonna, yeah. So we hooked uh -huh. you up with some more safety gear. Yeah. But remember that question you asked Kevin earlier when you saw the twin turbos? About the warranty? Yeah, if that was gonna void your warranty uh -huh. or not. The answer to that question is, mm, probably. That's why we went out and uh, and got you a five-year warranty oh, from CarSafe. Yeah, you man. Anything me. mechanical, electrical, computer, these oh, guys man. will take care of all of it. Roadside assistance, rental car, literally, man. Five-year warranties from our friends at CarSafe. That's now crazy. you're covered. Now you can go anywhere. Now you can handle your business. Huh? You That's get a little crazy. wiper motor go bad, you call them up. Oh, yeah. Everything gets fixed, yeah. man. Everything's you name it. Call. Now, normally, yeah. normally you get a car that modified. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard to insure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for you, for this project, man, yeah. they came in strong. Wow. And for everybody else, no matter what kind of mileage and year yeah. you have, call them up. They can put a plan together for you to take care of you. All right. So we went to SCAT. We got you some racing seats. Oh, my God. Not yeah. a bad little deal. Yeah. Double nice little stitch, stitching, right? yo. Yeah. We got you a five-point harness from Mastercraft. Keep you locked in there nice and tight. And your, your friends at PPG, they took yeah. the roll cage from RPM, painted the same color of the car. So, you know, you might want to throttle down after you tune that, those STS turbos up to about 1,000. You might want a roll cage, bro. I'm just saying. You know, we got a lot of friends out there through in things like backpack. We got goodies. Federated through in another AGM battery. One more prop we got to give out to, reliable carriers. They helped us get your car back and forth to PPG. That was really cool. But you know what? Before we go out to the next scene, we yeah. one more special person we'd like to bring in. Yeah. Your wife, Janelle. Come on, girl. Got to tell you, this is the reason you're alive. Bro. Exactly. She's, right she's a true inspiration. She, this is Janelle. This is John's wife. 
She's been with him through everything. Through everything. Man. We've been hearing the stories all day. <clears throat> totally like choking me up yeah, right no, now. Me. <laughs> Girl, I have so much respect for you, for both of you. Yeah. This has been an awesome you, build, man. Remember the spirit that this guy brings. I got to tell you, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. We captured a little bit on the show, but this guy is amazing.